Five years ago, a big discovery was made off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. 300 million barrels of oil buried deep beneath the ocean. Not even a year later, oil prices collapsed and Newfoundland's booming economy went bust. But now that the price of oil has somewhat recovered, the province wants to tap those oil riches. Today, it announced an agreement with Equinor Canada to develop the Bay du Nord offshore oil project. The province is taking a 10% stake in the nearly $7 billion project. It estimates that should bring in $3.5 billion in new revenue. And the operations phase will create 500 jobs over the next 12 years, the province claims. The Bay du Nord discovery is about 500 kilometers east of St. John's at a depth of about 1,200 meters. That's 10 times deeper than the province's current deepest offshore site. So, is the province expecting any political hurdles with this project, and could it be risky given how volatile oil prices are? Joining me now from Deer Lake in his district of Humber Gross Morn is the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Dwight Ball. Hi, Premier Ball. Thanks for being with us. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. So, you announced the deal with Equinor today, but I'm wondering what other hurdles must the project get over or must your province get over to make the project a reality? Are there any federal regulations, for example, or processes that the project has to clear? Well, what we've done today is signed a framework agreement which allows us now to, you know, continue the work getting this project ready for sale in 2020 and first of all in 2025. So a lot of the regulations that we do understand right now, the work will continue with this framework agreement. It now allows companies like Equinor and their USTI partner to be able to go out and have those constructive and meaningful discussions with, with other regulators and with those that would be interested in procurement for this project. From what I understand, the approval process is set to change somewhat, or the regulatory process is set to change somewhat, uh, uh, stemming kind of from the federal government. Do you have certainty about what to expect? Yeah, yeah we do. We've been working very closely with the federal government uh, on issues like this exploration off our shore. What's important for us today is that for over 20 years, we have been doing this in offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. We have a very stringent a robust regulatory regime in place. It's been working for over two decades with a lot of success. So we want to see those similar recommendations or regulations apply to this new basin opener. For the last 20 years, we've been working in one basin. This uh, agreement today allows us to get into a new basin, a new frontier in very deep water and some 500 kilometers off our shores. The break-even uh, point for the project is, for oil, is $49 per barrel. What happens to the project if the price drops below that level, again, as it has in the past, for example, in 2013? Not unusual that you see commodity pri uh, prices, they rise and fall. They do this over time. Uh, we are very comfortable where we are today with the framework agreement. We have taken out as a province. We have confidence. And we've taken out a 10% equity share. All the models that we have run as a province would show us even on the low end of this project, there are significant returns for all those investors. So we're there as a 10% equity shareholder, and the dividends for us in Newfoundland and Labrador and for those that invest in this project, over the life of this field, which will be from, you know, for 12 to 20 years, we see there will be great returns and great benefits to people in Newfoundland and Labrador and for those that invest in our offshore. Are you concerned at all, though, that the company behind it will drop the project if oil drops below, I, I understand, I take your point about it going up and down, but if it does drop below and we see a big hit like we have in the past, that break-even point. These are very sophisticated companies that are working in deep water projects all around the world. So this is not new to companies like Equinor and Uski as an example. So this is not the deepest project in the world. There are others that are much deeper than that. And those companies are investing. So what we see in our province right now is a very stable political environment, a province that is open for business. But what we see today is a, is a project with nearly 300 million barrels of oil, which when you look at the carbon that's in a barrel of oil, is 50% less than what we see the global average. So for a, a in a world where we're still using a fair amount of oil, this is a great place to invest with some of the least carbon per barrel in any jurisdiction in the world. I want to ask you about the, the world in which we're, we're living in, that very point you just made. Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador is still struggling with deficits due to the drop in oil prices from a few years back, and they've proven, as, you've talk, as we've talked about, to be volatile. We're also supposed to be in this world that's moving towards a low-carbon future. Are you concerned at all that perhaps your province is putting too many eggs into the oil and gas basket? Not at all, because when you, when you look at the use of petroleum uh, products uh, based on oil as a commodity, it's just not gasoline. It is other commodities as well. So what we know in the world right now, there's still a lot of oil that is used. We have a lot of 
when I look at the, the carbon per barrel of oil, there is no better place in the world. We are about 50% less than the world average right now. So when you look at those that use oil, and for a world that is using a lot of oil, when you look at the carbon per barrel, Newfoundland and Labrador has the best and some of the best in the world. Are you concerned at all, though, about a lack of diversification? I no, not at all, because we have mining. When you look at the, pro the investment that we have seen in our province in, in natural resources, just in the last 17 months, we have seen over $16 billion of investment in our province, and some of that, much of that, has been in the mining industry. We have, we're seeing growth in agriculture, aquaculture. So we have done, as a government, we are acutely aware that we need to uh, diverse our economy, and we've been putting a big focus on that in Newfoundland and Labrador because we are a province, as I said, that's open for business and has a lot of natural resources that we can actually can build on with success to the benefit of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, but really to the benefit of all of Canada. There's also the question, Premier, of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. That convention requires payments on the, quote, exploitation of the non-living resources of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles. That could mean up to 7% of revenues of this project must be paid to the UN. Have you worked out with the federal government who will pay that? Well, yeah, the Article 82, as you just mentioned there, as you exploit and you drill once you get beyond the continental shelf. And this is the first project that I understand in the world that would be in that position. This is a federal government responsibility. It's outside our 200 mile limit. So we've often said in all the discussions that we would have had with the federal government, this is the agreement that they have entered into and this will be their responsibility. Have they agreed to pay that money? Well, it is their responsibility because it is an agreement that they've entered into. On close is something that the federal government uh, as, as, as there as a representing all of Canada. But let's keep in mind that when you look at the benefits of this project, there's a lot of taxes, there's a lot of investments and benefits that will come to the federal government as a result of the success that we're seeing in offshore Newfoundland and Labrador and this new base in Ecuador and the partnership that we have with Ecuador and Muskie. But to be clear, have they conveyed to you that they will pay that? Well, they, they signed an agreement, so they do not come to us to ask for permission. That's up to them to pay those, those royalties and taxes on the agreement that they signed. So I would not expect any national government to back out of an agreement that they've agreed to uh, with the United Nations. All right, I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot for your time, Premier. Thank you.